Tommy Robinson was arrested last Friday, and this comes just days after Muslim Sajid Javid became Britain's new Home Secretary, which is more than a, a little coincidental, uh, one has to assume. Tommy was accused of breaching the peace, which is a lie, and immediately surrounded by seven members of Britain's heavily politicised paramilitary police force, bundled into the back of a van, taken straight to court, and then sent straight to prison. Several news outlets covered the arrest, but a la Orwell's 1984, they have already been consigned to the memory hole, which basically means <clears throat> the British government has issued what is called a D-notice, or a reporting restriction on the British press. And such a, an unprecedented judicial decision is usually associated with issues of national security, and not, to the best of my knowledge, uh, has ever been used before to silence a journalist in Britain and to then silence the silencing of a journalist, which my little left-wing half-witted friends is exactly what Tommy is. He's a journalist and a far better journalist than most of the beta males and epsilon semi-moron females working in Britain's Marxist media can ever hope to be. The details surrounding Tommy's jailing are not completely clear. We know he was serving a suspended sentence for contempt of court, which was issued because he had previously covered a criminal trial consisting of the usual suspects in the world of culturally inspired rape and torture, which our ruling elites would rather we did not know about. Reporting restrictions on criminal trials are usually issued because the judiciary don't want to lose a prosecution by interference with a jury. But the reporting restrictions on the hundreds of gang rape trials are not issued for this perfectly valid reason. Uh, they exist only in order that the general public remain completely in the dark as to the extent of the gang rapes and more importantly, the extent to which the government, police, social workers and journalists are absolutely complicit in the gang rape themselves. So when Tommy draws attention to this grotesque failure of every single arm of the state whose job it is to protect innocent, vulnerable English girls from the deprivations of imported gang rapists, the state suffers acute embarrassment and rather than confronting the core problem of the cultural ideology behind the rape of infidel girls, it chooses instead to silence those who embarrass them. The police arrested Tommy on a pretext. He wasn't breaching the peace at all. This was a, a lie, and a lie of such importance it couldn't possibly have come from rank-and-file coppers or even chief constables with degrees in transformational social justice and common purpose. This lie came directly from Theresa May's government. This lie came from the very top down, and it was planned to the last detail. A courtroom and a judge were waiting to immediately sentence him. A prison cell was booked in his name. The D-notice had already been activated. This combined is the action of a totalitarian state in, in all its brutal horror. This is the action of Nazi Germany, of Soviet Russia, of Maoist China. This is the action of a state no different to the states that murdered over a hundred million people in the last century, and the action of a state with no regard for democracy, equality before the law, or freedom of speech. This is the action of a fully-fledged totalitarian state, and it has happened in England. An England I no longer recognise, and an England those who sacrifice their lives in their millions to ensure democracy and decency sacrifice their lives in vain. And as Britain descends further into a catastrophic horror of unassimilable cultural diversity, courtesy of high birth rates, terror, and a fanatical belief that our way of life cannot coexist with their way of life, so the ratchet will ever tighten. And not against those who threaten our way of life and the very lives of our children and grandchildren, but against those who seek to defend our way of life. Britain's ruling elites have been given a clear choice between attacking the, the aggressive invader or attacking the innocent native defender. They've made their treacherous choice because it's easier to attack those who do not 
bomb pop concerts, public transport systems and aeroplanes. They have chosen instead to attack those who peacefully question the reasons behind the violent attacks upon our culture, our heritage and our traditions. They've made their choice and they have become totalitarian in their betrayal of their own culture, their own people, their own country, and this traitor class is everywhere. They control the government, the civil service, the media, the judiciary, the crown prosecution service, the police, the human rights industry, the schools, the universities, the social services. Like termites, they have slithered and bored their way into every root and every branch of Western civilization into every foundation that supported the multitude of factors that made Britain into what it so magnificently recently was, but is now shamefully no longer. So what happens next? This, this Orwellian disappearance of Tommy should be emblazoned across the front pages of every British newspaper. If a D-notice is issued curtailing this, then the media should be ablaze with discussions as to why this D-notice has been issued. But neither of these things will happen, nor will the thousands of civil, liberty law civil liberties lawyers and human rights lawyers who queue up to defend those who would destroy us have a thing to say about this totalitarian obscenity, and their abhorrent, abhorrent silence based purely on malevolent, sinister, left-wing political grounds is accompanied by the near silence of a democratic country and democratic culture being airbrushed out of existence with nary a whisper of protest. And what now of, of Tommy? We know swarthy, heavily bearded gentlemen of a particular cultural background more suited to a 7th century uh, Arabia than 21st century liberal Britain and who make up large numbers within our prisons will wish to harm him, perhaps even kill him. We know the traitor class government has no qualms about putting Tommy in with them rather than keeping them well away from him, so we can only reasonably conclude that nice cuddly Theresa May has found a way of not actually personally killing this man who embarrasses our traitor class to such an excruciating degree, but has found a highly convenient way of getting him killed. And if he is killed, as I think is planned, then the British government and the apparatchiks in its pay from Stasi-esque police chiefs, judges and BBC journalists who have airbrushed Tommy along with British democracy out of existence will be complicit in his murder. Every single treacherous one of them. I watched a live stream from London earlier with thousands of people protesting the jailing of Tommy. The area around the government buildings was shut down as people sat on the streets and shouted free speech now. Yet this is also being completely ignored by the mainstream media. I, I swear to God, all we have left now is open revolution, because if we're not allowed to speak truth to power, if our freedoms are trampled on and ignored by the ruling class, then they make peaceful change impossible and violent revolution inevitable. And given this, this unprecedented assault on morality, decency, equality before the law, freedom of speech, democracy, isn't it time we all started thinking in revolutionary terms? If, if we cannot galvanise ourselves over this Orwellian vaporisation of Tommy Robinson, then nothing will ever galvanise us. Tommy's only crime is to speak out against something truly monstrous, something truly evil and satanically wicked, all of which our ruling elites are complicit in. We're, we're in a battle of good against evil, a battle of freedom against tyranny, a, a battle for Western civilization itself. Arguments will be made that Tommy represents the far right and on that alone he, d he deserves to be locked up and murdered. The supporters of Tommy will be dismissed as fascists, so their grievances can also be safely and morally ignored. But the traitor class have made a serious mistake here. There are millions of British people who may not agree with what Tommy stands for, but they certainly don't agree with their government and all of its state enforcers behaving in a manner reminiscent of Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin. The rest of the world is horrified at the totalitarian depths plumbed by the British state, which has caused great shame for perfectly ordinary, upstanding British citizens. 
Listen to this ex-police officer on her thoughts about what's happened to Britain with regard to Toby. Listen to it and, and weep for Britain and having wept, get angry. Get furiously, magisterially angry about what these bastards are doing to our country. My name is Dion Muller. I am an ex-police officer from Leicestershire Constabulary. I have just seen um, a video on Twitter um, that shows Tommy Robinson being arrested in Leeds on suspicion of causing a breach of the peace. I don't normally do videos like this. I am absolutely disgusted. I am furious and I just feel like I have to say something. Tommy Robinson was standing in a public place outside a courtroom in Leeds. He was filming a live stream um, regarding the court case of some grooming gangs or a grooming gang um, that was going on in that courtroom today. He wasn't shouting. He wasn't making any sort of fuss, any trouble, but the police arrested him. He wasn't inciting anybody to do anything. I used to think that I missed being a police officer. But I'm absolutely over the moon that I am not in the UK anymore and I'm not a police officer there because I think it's shameful, shameful. I have made a formal complaint to the West Yorkshire Police. I, that's all I have to say. I, I really don't have any more words. I am. I'm, I'm actually quite upset. I, I am, and I don't normally get like this, but this is just... I don't know what else to say. Bye. Britain is heading for total capitulation before a traitor class totalitarian state, or it's heading for revolution. One of the two let me sum up just how bad things are. Tommy draws attention to the evils of gang rapists who rape and torture vulnerable little girls in Britain, which has been going on for three decades whilst the state did nothing in case they were called racists, and for drawing attention to this repellent evil carried out by the rapists themselves and the even more grotesque evil of a British state fully complicit in the gang rape, Tommy is now a political prisoner after a political trial and the state bans any coverage of his imprisonment. We're rendered powerless in the face of totalitarian political injustice. The British government holds all power. The police and the judiciary enforce the government's political repression. The media refuse to cover the repression. The human rights lawyers and civil liberties organisations refuse to defend the dissidents, to even speak about the political persecution of the dissidents. This means one thing and one thing only. Britain is now a totalitarian state. No ifs, no buts. Britain is now a totalitarian state. The government has made this perfectly clear. It's now time for you to take a side. Will, will you side with tyranny, repression, censorship, political persecution, a Gestapo S police force, a show trial judiciary and a muzzled media? Or will you side with decency, democracy, morality, and freedom, the side of England as it so recently was, and the side of England only you can rebuild. The choice is yours, and that applies not only to those who support Tommy, but to everyone who values freedom above totalitarianism. We must protest, we must march. 
Within 24 hours of Tommy's arrest, thousands gathered to protest outside Whitehall. Anne-Marie Waters' For Britain party held a protest at Speaker's Corner yesterday, but these protests cannot just be about Tommy. They must be about the totalitarian nature of Britain in 2018, and they must be attended by, by, by not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands, preferably millions. And they must be held outside Whitehall, the, the lair of the totalitarian and be slap bang in front of the bitter, horrified, resentful faces of our obscene politicians who must be held to account, who must be forced to recognise they've overstepped the mark, who must be forced by people power to behave in a democratic manner, who must be forced to govern Britain in line with the morals, values and democratic standards so many have sacrificed their lives in order to bequeath to them. And let me finish by simply saying, God bless Tommy Robinson. Whatever happens next, Tommy has already forced the dictatorial evils of our traitor class, of our quizzling betrayers, out into the harsh light of day. And for that alone, we owe him everything. Tommy will need a barrister, and they don't come cheap. His family need to be supported in the event the barrister fails to enable his release. So. Please donate all you can to support Tommy and his family. The donate link is also in the pinned comment underneath this video. Finally, there are turning points in the fate of nations. Britain is at such a turning point in 2018. What we now do will determine not just our fate, but the fate of our children and grandchildren. A British totalitarian state today will be followed by an Islamic state in the future. If we can defeat our current totalitarian state, we still have a chance to avoid an Islamic future. But if we cannot, all is lost and Britain is finished. Don't allow this to happen. March, protest and fight against this evil regime until we win as we must win.